Beautiful beaches, bussing nightlife, fantastic weather, decently sized cities with great digital nomad infrastructure, stunning nature, and very interesting history and culture, which includes the last divided capital in the world. Not to mention a very attractive digital nomad scheme. This is what we'll be looking at in today's video, the beautiful island of Cyprus. We will cover a general introduction to the country, digital nomad infrastructure, such as internet, housing, and of course, cost of living, where to make your digital nomad home base, what to do on the island, and of course, last but not least, the digital nomad visa scheme and how to apply for it. As always, you will find links to activities mentioned, timestamps and other resources for digital nomads down below in the description box. Without further ado, let's take a closer look at Cyprus. Cyprus, officially called the Republic of Cyprus, is an island country located south of the Anatolian Peninsula in the eastern Mediterranean Sea. It is geographically in Western Asia, but its cultural ties and geopolitics are overwhelmingly Southeastern European, and it is part of the European Union, though not the Schengen Zone. If you would like to know more about the Schengen Zone and its entry requirements, check out the video up here where I have broken it down. Being in the EU, Cyprus uses the Euro as currency, with the one US dollar currently equaling 0.89 euros. As a former British territory, English is widely spoken in Cyprus, making it a great destination for you if you would like to avoid any language barriers. Its official languages are Greek on the south side of the island and Turkish on the north side. Which brings us right to some of Cyprus's very complex history. Cyprus is a divided island and Cyprus's capital city, Nicosia, is the world's last divided capital city, meaning that the north part of the island is the self-proclaimed Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus. This is an independent state that officially has only been recognized by Turkey. All other UN nations consider Northern Cyprus as part of Cyprus. But the reality after an invasion by Turkey in 1974 is that you have two nations separated by a demilitarized UN buffer zone, also called the Green Line. When you want to cross from one side to the other, you will have to do so at a border crossing on both sides, showing your passport. And when you arrive in Northern Cyprus, you will be greeted with Turkish as the main language and the Turkish Lira as currency, though many places will also accept the Euro. And should you cross by car, make sure to buy a new car insurance on the other side. So, recognized or not, it is de facto very much a separate country. And this brings us to another solemn topic, mines in the buffer zone. Since July 2013, Cyprus has reported that no anti-personnel mines remain in the minefields laid by the National Guard on territory under its effective control. However, mine contamination remains in the buffer zone and in the Turkish Cypriot controlled areas. In 2020, mine contamination was classified as light but maybe you just want to stay on the marked paths actually i used to give a much more detailed account of a country's history in some of the previous videos but i felt that maybe for some of you this might be boring and going into too much detail however if you feel that this was interesting and beneficial and you would like to see a more detailed history bit in the upcoming videos let me know and i will take it into consideration but for now let's go back to cyprus first of all of course internet Cyprus ranks 30th in the world when it comes to mobile speed with 70.52 megabits per second download speed and 13.98 upload and it ranks 76th when it comes to fixed broadband speed with 53.5 megabits per second download speed and 24.26 megabits per second up. Stable Wi-Fi is available in all the bigger cities that I will recommend as digital nomad home bases, both in cafes, catering to the large expat and digital nomad community, but also in the co-working spaces you will be finding in these cities. And of course, buying a local SIM card with a data package is always a good idea when in a new location. 
When it comes to infrastructure, Cyprus has several airports, both in the north and the south, with the biggest one and the one you'd most likely arrive being the one in Lanarka, Lanarka International Airport. From Turkey, you can not only fly to Erkan Airport in the north, but you can also take a ferry to the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus. Once in Cyprus, a car will be your best option to get around, particularly if you want to explore the island independently. I have linked car rental services down below. Cyprus does not offer any public transport aside from buses or taxis. Keep in mind that crossing over to the north side is in fact easiest on foot. Before renting a car however, there are some things that you should be aware of. First of all, Cypriotic drivers are, shall we call them assertive? So you will need a lot of inner zen to brave traffic here which for many is not exactly made easier by the fact that as a former British colony they drive on the left side. Be aware of that before you rent a car. As a very popular tourist destination you will find all manner of accommodation offerings from hotels to Airbnbs on the island. If you plan to stay longer on a digital nomad visa you should consider renting an apartment as this will be much cheaper. You will usually be able to find offerings in the different Facebook groups. And if you plan to stay in an Airbnb or hotel, be aware that prices will skyrocket during the main tourist season and be significantly lower during the off season. Which brings us to the general topic of cost of living. As usual, my numbers come from Numbio because this is a crowdsourced and very up-to-date platform and are translated to US dollars to make a comparison easier for everybody around the world. Keep in mind that these numbers are average, meaning that depending on seasonality and of course where you choose to live, prices could be higher or lower. A family of four is estimated to pay 2,999 US dollars a month without rent. A single person is estimated to pay 861 US dollars and 40 cents per month without rent. Let's break this down a little bit. An inexpensive meal in a restaurant will cost you 16 US dollars and 48 cents. A cappuccino will cost you 3 US dollars and 54 cents. A monthly transport pass will cost you 43 US dollars and 96 cents. Taxi starting cost is 5 US dollars and 50 cents. And one mile in a taxi will cost you 2 US dollars and 70 cents. Basic utilities for an 85 square meter apartment would cost you around 192 US dollars per month. And internet would cost you 36 US dollars and 74 cents per month. A one bedroom apartment in the city center would cost you approximately 984 US dollars per month and a one bedroom apartment outside of the city center would cost you approximately 768 US dollars per month. So now that we've talked about that, let's talk about where to make your digital nomad home base. Meaning where can you work productively? Where can you meet other digital nomads and experts and grow your community? But also where will you be close to fun things to do during your spare time to explore this beautiful island. Here, while Cyprus is not a huge island, it does have several cities that could be interesting to you. Let's dive into them. Let's start with Nicosia. Nicosia is the largest city and capital. And as you may remember from the introduction, since the fall of the wall in my hometown Berlin, it is also the world's last remaining divided capital. It has about 200,000 inhabitants and is rich in history, offers plenty of interesting museums, shops, restaurants, cafes and nightlife. Yet it is close enough to both beaches and mountains that you can escape the city for a day trip. And this proximity is needed particularly during summer. Nicosia is, in contrast to the other popular digital nomad destinations, located inland and can get very, very hot during the summer. On the bright side, it charms its visitors not only with rich cultural offerings, it is also the city where you can best observe the ambiguity of the country, crossing over to the north, walking the green line, and experiencing the two countries that call parts of this capital theirs. If you like big city vibes and don't want to miss your typical big chains and brand stores, then the city center is a good place for you to settle. Here you will find plenty of shopping opportunities as well as suitable places to work or delicious restaurants to eat at. 
if you would like to experience more of the traditional Cyprus on the other hand and dive into the multifaceted history of Nicosia and the island, then the old town might be your place to be. Here you can stroll through the small windy streets and are right by the green line and the border crossing on Ledra Street. As with most beautiful old towns, however, it'll get very crowded during the high season when masses of tourists will push their way through the small streets, making the already hot city feel even more suffocating. So, what to do in your spare time? Well, one thing has already been mentioned. Walk the Green Line and cross the border to the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus. As with most border crossings, don't forget to bring your passport. To learn more about the history of the division, but even more importantly, the efforts to move past that and build bridges and community, stop by the Home Cafe, a cafe that is located in the buffer zone, in no man's land, so to say, and aims at building peace and reuniting the separated community through love and understanding. And while you are in the old town, why not step by Panaya Fanomerenis church? While maybe a little unassuming on the outside, the interior is beautifully decorated with impressive gold-plated iconography. In North Nicosia, you can find another house of worship that is representative of the city's mix of cultures. The city's main mosque, the Selimia Mosque, which is housed in the building of the former Catholic Cathedral of St. Sophia. Limassol is the second largest city on Cyprus and is the perfect location for digital nomads who would like to live by the water but still be close to the Trooros Mountains. It is home to a large expat community and has several co-working spaces as well as many cafes to work from. Not to mention all the other conveniences one would want from city life. Like I mentioned earlier, it also has the biggest airport on the island, making it a conveniently connected base. One of the most famous landmarks in Limassol is the medieval castle you shouldn't miss. Not far from Limassol, you can also visit Aphrodite's Rock, the presumed birthplace of Aphrodite. Though, as often is the case with these myths, there are several other contestants for that claim as well. Nevertheless, if you are into mythology, head here and swim around the rock, which is supposed to make your wishes come true and award you with eternal beauty. Take a day trip inland and head to the Troodos Mountains for a glimpse into traditional Cyprus. The beautiful village of Omodos is famous for its winemaking and traditional appeal. The third biggest city on Cyprus is Lanaka, a beach paradise with cafes to allow you to work productively and spend the rest of your time in or by the water. Lanaka also has a co-working space, but if you're really looking for a big choice amongst those in order to work and grow your network, then Limassol might be a better option for you. Lanaka is a more relaxed beach town. It is quieter and calmer than Limassol and not as touristy as some of the other destinations on the island. Sports a beautiful promenade and plenty of water activities with the most famous beach being the Fikinodes beach. Lanaka is also a famous destination for scuba divers, many of whom enjoy exploring the Zenobia shipwreck, which sunk here in 1980. Another super interesting water activity is a visit of the Museum of Underwater Sculptures, which can be enjoyed by diving or snorkeling. It is an installation of 93 water sculptures submerged at 8 to 10 meters of depth, depicting trees, figures and nature scenes. In winter, there is another very special spectacle to observe in the area. Just south of Lanaka are the salt lakes of Lanaka, which are visited by huge flocks of flamingos during the winter season. The last potential digital nomad home base for you would be Paphos. 
Paphos is the perfect spot for beach lovers and lovers of ancient tales alike. The city has been inhabited since Neolithic times. Paphos is a lively little beach town with lots of bustling waterfront bars, cafes and restaurants. And in the old town you can wander small streets and discover cute little shops selling all kinds of goods. Popular locations here are Kato Paphos, which will put you smack down in the touristic center. Or if you prefer to be close to the action, but not right in the middle of it, then Musalas might be an alternative. It is a little quieter and more local, but still close to all the essential amenities. And on your days off? Well, Paphos is by the Mediterranean Sea, allowing you to relax by the beach or be active in the water to your heart's desire at one of the many beaches. And when that gets boring, remember that Paphos is a paradise for history lovers. Here are some sites that you might want to visit. The archaeological site of Nea Paphos is famous for the Paphos mosaics, which are considered some of the finest in the eastern Mediterranean. They are huge floor pictures depicting hunting scenes, mythical sea monsters and more, and were accidentally discovered by a farmer in 1962 as he was plowing his field here. Another impressive sight from days long past are the Tombs of Kings, a huge necropolis dating back to the 4th century BC, about 2 kilometers from Paphos. The tombs have been carved into the rock wall and are thought to have been reserved for noblemen and other high-ranking individuals. You can actually take a 30 minute walk of about 3.5 kilometers along the coastline between these two attractions. A testament to more modern times and a very unusual site is the shipwreck of the Edro 3, which ran aground just a few kilometers north of Pathos in 2011. And if you have enough of the glittering water and the gorgeous sandy beaches, or maybe you just wish to escape the masses of tourists in summer, why not go for a hike in the Troodos Mountains? It'll be cooler and less crowded here, and you can visit some beautiful, authentic mountain villages to see the local and simpler way of life. A popular destination here are the Caledonia waterfalls near the village of Pano Platres, the perfect destination for a cool down on a hot summer's day. Or head to the Blue Lagoon in Akamas National Park. You might have never seen water this beautiful. Another fantastic spot for a little adventure is the Avacas Gorge, near the Bay of Toxefras. Wander through the breathtaking narrow gorge and be awestruck by nature. Or, for a very special encounter of the animal kind, head to Lara Bay to visit the Sea Turtle Conservation Center. Last but not least, another day trip you shouldn't miss is to the Kikos Monastery, about 45 minutes drive from Paphos. It was founded around the 11th century and might just be the most famous monastery in all of Cyprus. Marvel at the beautiful frescoes and the jaw-dropping gold altar that speaks of the wealth of this monastery. And there you go! The beauty of Cyprus is that it is small enough for you to discover all of it, no matter in which city you base yourself in. You can take day trips or short trips to explore the entire island, which gives you a great opportunity to work productively and spend a lot of time adventuring during your spare time. Which brings us to the next question. How to stay in Cyprus? What are the visa options? The first one for people that would like to stay 90 days or less is of course the tourist visa. As I have mentioned, Cyprus is in the EU, but not in the Schengen zone, which is great news for you if you would like to travel more in the Schengen zone because a stay here won't count towards your 90 days. However, Cyprus has a similar visa condition, meaning you get to stay for 90 days out of 180 days. The countries on the list here on the side are the ones that can enter Cyprus without a visa. 
all other nationalities will either have to get a visa on arrival or visit one of the country's consulates. If you would like to stay longer than 90 days, however, then Cyprus has a very interesting visa scheme for digital nomads, which allows you to stay for one year and can be prolonged for two additional years. This visa scheme has been introduced in 2021 when it was capped at 100, meaning 100 digital nomad visas were to be given out. However, because of its popularity, in 2022, the government decided to raise that number to 500. One great thing about the Cyprus Digital Nomad Visa is that you get to bring your family, meaning a spouse, a partner or children. By the way, if that is something that you are interested in, if you are a digital nomad family, check out my playlist where I have marked all digital nomads that will allow you to bring your family. So. The visa is available to all non-EU, non-EEA members that are able to perform their work digitally. To qualify, you must have an income of at least 3,500 euros per month after the deduction of contribution and taxes. And you will need to make an appointment at the Cypriot Embassy or Consulate at your place of residency. You will need to bring the following documents. A proof of income, for example through bank statements your CV and a letter stating why you wish to work and live in Cyprus, proof of a health and accident insurance that covers you at at least 30,000 euros, proof of accommodation in Cyprus and a clean criminal record. The application fee is 70 euros and it'll take around five weeks to three months for you to get an answer. Once approved, you can fly to Cyprus. Here you will have three months to get your residency permit. To do so, you will need to make an appointment at the Civil Registry and Migration Office in Nicosia and bring the following documents. A copy of your passport that clearly shows your entry date in Cyprus. If you are employed, you will need a work contract stating your employment for the entirety of your stay, a certificate or letter from your employer stating that you can perform your duties from abroad digitally, a stamped registration of that company and a description of your duties. If you are self-employed, you will need to prove that you have work contracts for the entirety of your stay and that you can easily perform your duties online. You will also need to again prove your income of at least 3,500 euros per month and you will need to show the original paper of your clean criminal record. Furthermore, you will need a blood test showing that you do not carry any infectious diseases like HIV, syphilis, hepatitis B or C and a lung x-ray showing that you do not carry tuberculosis. You will furthermore need proof of health insurance, you will need to prove your accommodation in Cyprus and you will need to write a letter that neither you nor your accompanying family members will take work in Cyprus. The registration fee will once again be 70 euros. And like I've mentioned before, after one year, if you decide you would like to stay longer in Cyprus, you can apply for a two-year extension of the visa, in which case you will have to show proof of all that we have just talked about once again. And you will have to do so one month before your visa expires. And if Cyprus now sounded really interesting, but maybe you would like to have a culturally similar but bigger country, or you would like to be able to stay longer, even indefinitely, check out my recent two videos about the digital nomad visa to Greece and Greece for digital nomads, where A, you have a lot more places that you can visit. Greece is a huge country. Um, you also have the possibility to get not only a digital nomad visa, but digital nomad residency, which basically allows you to stay indefinitely with great tax advantages for the first seven years. With that said, thanks so much for your time and I'll see you here in the next one. Stay safe. Bye bye.